This week has been a very rough week for Wargaming at Gamescon. As you guys know, Wargaming decided to release an unfinished product, which is the Graph Zeppelin, during the event just to salvage the product. As a result, community contributors like iChase Gaming, Notzer, rant about it. iChase got in trouble with saying certain things to employees that cost him his community contributor status. The forums exploded, a bunch of controversy, and at the end of the day, Wargaming stepped it up and decided to admit to their own mistakes that they rushed the product out just to sell during the event. They also apologized to iChase Gaming because they terminate him without thinking through the process. Now iChase Gaming was given an opportunity to join back on the community contributors program but he refused to join back because he was still had that weight on his shoulder for being a community contributor because he knows that there's things that he shouldn't be saying that he wished to express emotionally. So the Graph Zeppelin. I'm not going to talk too much about the Graph Zeppelin because people get the point here. The Graph Zeppelin was poorly finished and there's a lot of testing to do with the Graph Zeppelin. Wargaming took it down from the shop and they did say that they admit to their mistakes of not letting more time to test the ship before they sell it for a ridiculous expensive price of $60. Now I talked about this in my Enterprise video. I am not happy the way they price ships in this game. You got something like the Alabama Turpits which was priced at $55, it's a good ship. But then you got something like the Enterprise and the Graf Zeppelin which they arbitrarily pick $60. Why are carriers more expensive than battleships? To me, you know, when I say things, I can't always be certain, but how I feel about it, they're only charging higher because they know for a fact that not many people play carriers. Now, as a result with the Graf Zeppelin disaster, people are asking why are people making a big deal out of this poor premium launch? This is the most disastrous premium launch I have ever seen. And you know, the point isn't there to most people, and that's what really bothers me. Because not only Graf Zeppelin was horribly launched, it also brought up the debate again. The state of carriers, the rework. And of course, there is a good amount of people who want carriers removed from this game. And that really boils my blood because majority from what I've seen, these people who want to remove carriers from the game is because they want to get rid of a, a ship, a class of ship that counters them to a certain degree. And at the same time, not only that they are saying this, they have never played carriers because when they see carriers, they only see what's on the outside. As people has always tell me, don't ever let the look fool you because on the outside, carriers are just simply a mess. So. Why was Graf Zeppelin such a big deal, even though it's just a another premium ship? Well, the developers who decided to change the Graf Zeppelin, I'm not going to get into the details how they change it, but there has been things that gets me scratching my head. And these are the same people who are working on the CV rework. These are the same people who are implementing new things to the game. These are the people who decided to remove Stealth Fire. These are people who decide how the detection of a ship works. It's how the game functions. You gotta realize these are the same people. Just because it's, you know they're working on a ship, you know it, it, it doesn't mean that you can't translate to potential other factors in this game. And that would really bother me. I wasn't entirely bothered by the fact that the Graf Zeppelin was botched. I know it's, it's disheartening to see a beautiful ship being botched, but what really bothered me was that these are the same people that I have to question their competency to do the CB re rework. And for all this time of this year, I, I decided that, you know, that I made two videos already about how frustrated I am with the CB rework. And some day ago, I made another video, I think it was like my Nelson video, and some guy commented about the state of potential changes to CVs that they're going to nerf the Japanese CV and he asked me about what I think about it. I told that person, I can't judge. I cannot judge yet because 
Wargaming promise, he promised us that by the end of 2017, they're going to rework the carriers and make them better in terms of the state. So I can't judge because I got in sick of how, you know, I, I really did got in sick of how they taking this situation, like how they handled the CVs in, in this case. It's been two years, guys, two years. I mean, crazy, right? It's been that long and, you know, I stopped wasting my energy. It is not worth it until they have demonstrate to me how they're going to fix carriers, then I will consider. But so far, it looks like it's getting worse and worse and worse. And after seeing the Graf Zeppelin AP bomb drop, if you haven't figured, after you drop the bomb or let go of your payload, it doesn't hit your target until 9 seconds later. I don't know the numbers, but it's, it's a new mechanic. And premium carriers, I have, I have a very big problem with premium carriers, honestly. You know, I, I love my Kaga, I love my Enterprise. I'm always looking forward to premium carriers, I'm a big fan of carriers. But what really drives me to the ground here is that premium carriers is a different world from the tech tree carriers. And that kind of gives you an idea of how horrible the state of CVs are right now. And it's disappointing to feel this way, but the truth is, carriers are the minority, and the majority is what matters. That's what we're giving here, and not many people, not many people, you know, want to step it up, whether they play carriers or not, to say that you know carriers are in this pathetic state. It's the truth, you know. Is oh, Graf Zeppelin's horrible. I don't play the Graf Zeppelin. I don't play carriers in general. It's not my problem. And the big elephant in this room, like I said, these are the same people who are, you know, messing around with the function of this game. And I'm going to, you know, try my best. I'm doing this without any script, but at the top of my head, I'm not only going to talk about carriers in this video. And I don't know how long I take, but I'm going to also talk about other potential problems that people have been talking about, or if not, a big controversy because I want to really address the big picture here. The picture that a lot of people, as I feel it, don't see. For example, I'm sure that you guys have been hearing this, but Destroyers players aren't happy the way Radar is working in this game. A lot of people have been experiencing games where your team picks a side of the map, let's all go D, let's go, all go A, and then for whatever reason, your team just ends up in the corner and they don't want to capture the flag. There's a lack of objective plays today. We got into matches where you, you just get slaughtered. And these are the games a year to two years ago that is rare. But today it's much more frequent. So people have been asking, Wargaming, can you fix for the sake of our enjoy, enjoy, um, enjoyment? Can you fix the passive games? Because I'm getting sick of, you know, people sitting in the back. Why, why can't we have nice things working? These are the things that people have been debating. Um, we live in a battleship meta. I don't know why people are pretend, pretending like we don't, but the truth is, I play all four classes of ships. 80% to, or 70%, I don't know how many percentage, but a, a lot of my time has been with battleships. And I also have been playing destroyers and cruisers. Lately, I decided to stop playing battleships because I, I feel like I want to do something different. And I play cruisers. I got in my tier nine Baltimore, and it's rough. It's rough playing in the battleship meta because every time I show a broadside, battleships want to shoot at me. Battleships know they can overmatch my armor, and people from the cruiser population are asking war gaming, why do we live in the battleship meta? I was playing my Japanese destroyers, the, I don't know, whatever Japanese destroyer I can think of the top of my head, I have like a tier 7, tier 8, but the point is I was playing Japanese destroyers and it's rough to deal with radar, and sometimes I wish I want to hit the battleship, ship, but there's just radar, hydro acoustic search everywhere, there's German secondaries, and the fact that Japanese destroyers have really crappy torpedo detection that they never had before. A long time ago they didn't have this problem. What I'm saying here is all of these problems that doesn't have the word carrier in it relates to the problem with carriers. And that is the big picture that people are not seeing. Let's begin with radar. 
at one point when carries were at least you know common in matchmaking way back in the beta days and I understand that during the beta days carries were ridiculous and matchmaking was broken but carriers they they spot destroyers there was no radar the game was simplistic you know you send your fires out your team is no your team knows that there's a Japanese destroyer on their flank and they need help to hunt down that destroyer carriers offer that counter to destroyers now of course you can you can argue with me that you know you play destroyers and you've been to a carry match where um, the carry just spots you forever and your AA is just pathetic. It cannot take down the planes. I, I've been through that. But the point is, at that time, Japanese destroyers, which is right now currently what people said is the worst class of destroyers to play because they really have to depend on the torpedoes and the torpedoes has awful concealment. A battleship can spot it and they just dodge it. But Back in the day, Japanese had really good concealment, if I recall correctly, with their torpedoes. It was not until Wargaming nerfed the torpedoes when they did their Japanese rework, the Japanese dis destroyer um, secondary branch. And the reason why is because a lot of cruisers and battleships were getting sick of Shimakaze torpedoes just coming out of nowhere because of their great concealment, good speed, and a lot of damage. Now before, carriers, all they had to do was fly their planes across the water randomly around the objective. They don't have to spot the destroyer. And once they spot the torpedoes, the torpedoes are permanently spotted and your team just can dodge it. Yeah, it, that, was, that was one very useful thing about carriers at that time. But ever since the decline of carriers, Wargaming decided that, you know, there's not enough things in the game, in this case carriers, to stop the dominance of these random torpedoes that battleship players and cruisers have been complaining because it's just a pure out of nowhere. So as a result, we brought it upon ourselves that Japanese destroyers will be nerfed and the torpedoes will be like that. The only chance that Japanese will get their torpedoes in a good run is that the battleship player was oblivious or you close the distance and you try to you know, deal with um, deal damage against those, those battleships, don't give them a chance. But yeah, that is why we have Japanese torpedoes today with their crappy detection on their torpedoes. Now, I might be wrong, but I, I remember a time, this was a time I haven't played destroyers, okay? But I remember a time when Japanese torpedoes were very powerful because of their concealment. But today, I don't feel it anymore because it's, it's a struggle. Now, let's talk about radar. Okay. Ever since the decline of carriers, at that period of time, destroyers started to become more powerful because carriers, like I said, they spot. Contrary to what most people believe, okay? Most people believe that carriers were, their biggest asset was to do damage. And that's, that's only true. If you've ever played carriers, that's only true if the target is by themselves, because you can pick them off. You will always win in most cases, if you know what you're doing. But since carriers were on a decline, nobody was spotting destroyers. Destroyers were sitting inside smoke, like American destroyers, farming damage, Japanese doing their own thing, flanking, and people asking somebody to chase down that destroyer, but nobody can spot the destroyer. Because the biggest asset of a carrier was not damage, but reconnaissance. They provided you very vital information of the enemy's ship movement. This was a period of time when we don't have campy games. This was a period of time where we don't stack aside and flip a coin on two brothers. It's because carriers in the beginning, they send their fighters out and they count how many battleships are going to A, how many battleships are going to D, and then we just send our ships over there. And, you know, we have three battleships on this side, we better send our battleships on that side. Today, I'm, I'm sure everyone gets in the situation, how can I have no battleships on this side of the map to deal with the enemy battleships? It's frustrating, right? And the answer is simple, it's because nobody is providing information. Now, in the case of destroyers, at that point, remember, destroyers had the best concealment since nobody's spotting, biggest asset for a carrier. Wargaming not only nerf Japanese destroyers with their detection on their torpedoes, but they try to address the problems with destroyers. What spots destroyers? How do you stop destroyers from sitting inside of smoke? Now, if they, if they sit inside of smoke and once the smoke dissipate, they have like a certain period of time where um, they, they can't use the smoke, right? It's still on cooldown. Well, carriers, what they do is that once the smoke dissipates, they chase down the destroyers. So the destroyer would think second time to set up another smoke because if they sit in the smoke too long and the carrier plane is right above them, then they will get they will pay for it, right? 
That was the idea of carrots. They were spotting destroyers, so they think second time of setting another smoke because if they're gonna set up smoke, it can't be too close to the enemy fleet. Or once the smoke dissipate, you get spotted by planes and you get shredded. But back in the day, when carrots were on decline, they can shoot freely inside the smoke. Smoke done. Don't fire guns because concealment was really good on destroyers. That's what you expect. And they wait for 60 seconds and they set up another smoke and battleships were getting irritated by the fact that they can just send the smoke forever, especially the American destroyers. Now Russian destroyers, you know, they do whatever they want. The Russian destroyers, they, they're big, they are the biggest exception in this situation because they don't care about concealment. But in the case of American destroyers, they really have to depend on their concealment and the smoke. But since carriers weren't spotting the American destroyers, Americans have the best smoke in this game. People got frustrated, and what Wargaming has done is that we're going to implement radar with our upcoming Soviet cruisers because we're going to fill in that gap that used to be a role of the carrier. Instead of fixing carriers, they, they just added something new to the game. And when you add something new, you know, simple things are easy to fix, but complicated things are hard to fix. Any more things present new problems. And this was a shorthand solution to dealing with destroyers inside of smoke. Now radar, it was a good idea. And, and just thinking about it, it's kind of a cool idea, but it was somewhat poorly executed as we see it today because a lot of destroyer players just don't like that. And as a result, we get games. We get games where that your destroyers don't want to capture the objective. And part of that reason, and I'm sure I can speak for the destroyers out there, Part of that reason is because when they saw the leaderboard, they see a lot of radar cruiser. And every time you go to the B flag, you get spotted by radar, the chance of survival is very low. Especially when there's a Des Moines. A lot of cruisers nearby. It's just very low because you magically appear in the middle of the ocean. It was that bad. And that's why destroyers are second thinking about going to the objective. And that's why we get less objective plays. That is why we see games where our destroyers don't want to go in. It's because they have the radar advantage. Now, between me being permanently spotted by a a plane, which I can see coming, because the planes will be spotted on the minimap, and being out of nowhere, radar radar popping out of nowhere, and also I'm, I light up like a Christmas tree, I don't know what's going on because I'm inside the smoke, and most likely going to lose most of my HP, if not die, which can happen a lot of times. Unlike Radar, which there is no counterplay currently, the only counterplay you can do is just sail away from range, but by the time you know you try to sail away, you're going to lose a lot of your HP. Planes, you can always ask your friendly carrier to shoot down the planes. Now, yes, I'm not stupid, but not every player in this game is perfect, and some people don't help you. But let's just assume, let's just, you know, just the idea of it. Of it. Let's just assume that the carrier on your team has some sort of competency, like they're competent of playing carriers. They will send their fighters over and they deal with the enemy fighters. At the same time, you can also send your side smoke, because unlike radar, planes can't really spot you inside the smoke, but it doesn't mean that you can send the smoke forever because that plane will be there to look at you. But the point is, there's actually counterplay to being spotted by planes. Not only that, if, you, if your carrier is not doing so well with shooting down the fighters, you can always go to friendly cruisers and battleships. The destroyers shouldn't be lone wolfing by themselves in most situations, of course. Sometimes you can lone wolf. Sometimes you need to lone wolf to get the torpedo run with your Japanese destroyer, if it's worth it, of course. A lot of things we have to make decisions in this game, and sometimes it's a rough decision. But in most cases, if you're, if you're going to take the objective, assuming that your team is somewhat competent of following you in, planes should be in that problem. Smoke up for your team. Your team goes inside of smoke, you're inside of smoke, and don't have to worry about radar. While planes, you know, the, the radar, with radar case, you, you get spotted, but with planes, you don't have to worry that much because you got friendly anti-air and carriers. There's a lot of counterplay to being spotted by planes, but radar there isn't. Now, of course, planes can spot you for a long time, but the point is, more people are frustrated, frustrated with dying to radar, and it's rough. Let's talk about Probably the biggest thing that people don't like in this game, and this is probably the reason why I don't play World of Warships as often as I wanted to, and this is a big problem in the high tiers. Passive games. Don't look at me like you have never witnessed a passive games. You know, passive games are 
like your battleship sits, sits at the back of the map, your your cruisers are back there also, and your destroyers don't want to make a move. Part of that reason why we have passive games is because of the lack of carriers. Remember when I say that the biggest asset of a carrier is reconnaissance? The reason why we have passive games and why this is a developing behavior and you know a lot of people can argue with me with this but this is how I feel about it because I'm comparing it with my previous experience two years ago because this wasn't a problem two years ago. It wasn't that big of a problem. I mean it exists but it's not big of a problem. Maybe the game has matured but back in the day I don't know how many people who still play World of Warships all the way two years ago but when we had a carrier in the match, the carrier would send their planes over and they would spot the ships, they would count which ships you're dealing with, there's a Russian or American destroyer going to the A flag, you're playing Japanese destroyer, it's not a good idea to jump into the A flag with your Japanese destroyer because you're going to lose the gun battle. They will count how many battleships are going which way because if you're playing battleship, you want to follow the enemy battleship to farm damage. It's a win-win situation, right? You're helping your team dealing with battleships and you're trying to farm damage against the other battleships or cruisers, it, it allows you to figure out what cruiser are there, which one is deadly, which one's not that deadly because there are ships that are not that great. So much information. And people pretend like, you know, oh, carriers, we can just remove it because we don't need them. How many times people ask carriers to spot? I, I'm sure plenty of times we ask destroyers and carriers to spot. I mean. Destroyers, they're the second choice of scouting, but carriers are the better choice because they can just send their planes and they get from point A to point B way faster than destroyers. Destroyers have their own priority of taking objectives, being at the front line, smoking up. They don't always have to spot. And sometimes when they smoke up, they can't peek out of smoke. Who's going to spot on the other side of smoke? The easiest way to spot is carriers. I see all the time when I play carriers. People ask me, please spot this ship. Please spot this destroyer. Please spot this balance ship. When the carriers were spotting, showing what ships were deadly, showing what ships are going to A, what ships go D, gives us this very important information because concealment is a major part of this game. It gave it gave us confidence. Confidence that, you know what, I know there's a ship there and that ship counters me well. So I'm going to figure out a way to deal with it. That confidence that we needed to push into the objectives. This was not, not a passive game. This was an active game mindset. It was an active mind because we had that confidence with that information that the carrier offered us. But ever since the decline of carriers, again, we don't have that confidence no more. Why? Because we lost a lot of the early game information. We don't know where the battleships are at. I'm sure that everyone who plays cruisers, magically, four battleships appear on one side and the moment they appear and they spot you, you're screwed. You lose a lot of HP. Or you send your battle ship over there and all of a sudden destroyers and cruisers appeared and you know for a fact that you're way out of position with a big ship that's hard to get out of position, you're going to die. And when you die enough times, you learn a lesson and the safest option, as always, is to slow down and begin the match and wait for everyone to go in, right? Right? Isn't that the option? Play passive? Because you don't know what's on the other side of that island. You don't have that confidence no more. The big picture, the truth is, instead of worrying about you know, why you don't like cares, I, I don't care if you never play cares or you play cares. World of Warships is our game. We are, we are playing this together, guys. And you can't just pretend like, I don't play cares, it's not my problem. These are the same people who developed the game. If you're complaining about passive games, why cruisers have to live through the battleship meta, because while I was playing Destroyers and Cruiser, it was rough. The most stable class of ship to play in this game, the, the ship that I don't have that much problem with, is truly the battleships. And battleships, the you know, the battleship meta, the biggest counter to battleships are carriers. Now, I am definitely against the idea of just because I'm playing a counter like a carrier, doesn't always mean that I can just delete whatever ship I want. There's always there's always that challenge, you know, there's always that chance that the player can get away with. I'm certainly against the idea that, you know, just because the carrier counters battleship, I'm I'm not supporting the fact that carrier should always win against um, battleships. Same way as playing destroyers, you know, cruisers are usually the winner against destroyers in a gun battle. I'm against the idea that if a destroyer faces a cruiser, 
destroy your loot automatically. There's always that level of skill, that level of thinking, the level of complexity in this game that allows the players to overcome that challenge. But of course, the expected outcome should be that ship, right? And since cares were gone, we lost that contribution to ship balance. We lost that contribution. That is why it's really difficult to fight the battleship meta because they're the most popular and part of the reasons that carriers are letting battleships do whatever they want because there's no carriers. Battleships can go wherever they want. I mean, yeah, destroyers are also a counter to battleships because of their torpedoes, but hey, look at Wargaming. When destroyers were a big problem, what new battleships came out that can effectively deal with the destroyers? I don't know. A battleship that has hydro crystal surge to spot torpedoes and also great secondaries to deal with destroyers and punish them for it. Because at that time, battleship players were complaining about how destroyers can straight up charge at them or they can't see the, the torpedoes. I don't know. Is it the German battleships? You know, the, the German ones that at tier 8 with the Bismarck, you can have that really nice hydro crystal surge that before they nerfed it and also that 10 kilometer secondaries. Isn't that so ideal? You see, they're adding new things to the game to to rebalance the game when they should be focusing on how to fix carriers. But maybe I'm biased because you know, some people say that people like me who, who view carriers as a problem, even though I play 70% battleships, they think I'm just biased. Maybe I am. But, then, but then at the end of the day, you know, at this point, I have lost enough sleep over this issue because after what I have witnessed with the Graf Zeppelin, even though I said to that person that I will talk about this at the end of 2017, they state that they're going to test the Graf Zeppelin three months, for three months. And after three months, it should be like the 11 month, the 12 months, that leaves only one month to fix carriers? You serious? Yeah, you can see where I'm going here. Now, in this final part of this video, I'm going to address the biggest problem I have with premium carriers. When we talk about premium ships, I always say that 80% of a premium ship can be related to a tech tree ship, ship, a ship that you can unlock in this game for free, 80%. You say Alabama, premium Alabama, I can get that similar experience with the North Carolina. You say Tirpitz, I can say Bismarck. The 20% difference is like hydro crystal search versus um, torpedoes. You say, I don't know, what else, what other ships? Belfast, I say Fiji or Edinburgh. Yes, it might not have HE, but you can still do somewhat similar performance with those two ships. You still do the same idea, you play the same way, put the smoke, send the smoke, do damage. Same thing. Indianapolis, yeah, she's, she's a way better version of the Pensacola because of her radar. Atlanta, well, we do have ships in this game that kind of have some sort of resemblance to Atlanta, like the Minotaur. It's... See how easy it is for me to find a ship that I can relate to? The Mutsu, I can compare it to the War Spy or the future Queen Elizabeth or possibly the Bayern. It's, it's, it's like, if a player plays this ship, I can give them the premium ship and they can feel familiar. They can feel home with it. But, with 80% similarities with all the other class of ships, carriers is 50%. And that's horrible. I feel 50% 50, 50 of it similar to the tech tree. 50. It's a different world to play a premium carrier. What do I mean by that? Well, not only do we have really crappy, the, the, the shitty state of carriers, but the premium carriers are just, it's not right. And this is coming from a person who bought the Kaga, a person who bought the Enterprise. You know, I spend money on these ships. That's, that's $100 right there. The reason I say it's not right is because look at Kaga and compare it to Hiryu and Ranger. Kaga, she has 12 torpedoes. She's the only carrier in this game that has more damage than the next tier carrier. She does more damage than the tier 8 Shokaku and the Lexington. That's crazy. That is that is out of the world. That is something that if you jump on the Hiryu and jump on the Kaga, it's day and night between the two different, you know, the experience. The experience is just day and night. And that's the truth. She's the most unique tier 7 carrier for having the highest damage output ever. You see what I'm saying here? Because if you give someone here, you give someone Kaga, you can see the drastic difference here. 
It's not like compare Alabama and you know, North Carolina. It's like small things like torpedoes or or consumables and and armor, health, guns. Those are the things that is a characteristic of a ship. Okay, those are the characteristics of ships. But here with carriers, we're not dealing with characteristics of ships. And I'm not saying planes also, but we're dealing with the mechanic of the game. The mechanic. Because the Kaga just breaks the mechanic for having 12 torpedoes at tier 7, and they're the fastest torpedoes you will ever see right now. Fast and 12 torpedoes. That is way out of the world. That is that is day and night difference for playing Ranger or Hiryu compared to the Kaga. I don't care about my dive bombers. I care about my dive bombers on my Hiryu, but I don't care about the Kaga because I know 12 torpedoes should do the trick. Saipan. Saipan is the only carrier in this game. See what I'm saying? This this different world. She's the only carrier that can use a plane that is two tier different from her tier. She has tier 9 planes. These are way faster than the Hellcats and Zeros. She's the only carrier in this game that can dogfight and strafe out of the dogfight without losing a plane. She also has the best ammo loadout. Like she, she just doesn't run, run out of ammo with her fighters. That's why the Saipan is so strong at tier 7 is because she has fast planes to catch all those tier 6 and tier 7 torpedo bombers and she'll win the dogfights because of the strafe out of the dogfight mechanic. Tier 9 is it's day and night, and yes, they did this because the idea was that the side paint has a very small, um, small capacity. But a lot of people, you know, people like me who are frustrated when they play their hero you and ranger go against the side paint or go against the kaga, because you know they have such a advantage. But you know, when you compare Turpits and Bismarck, they have their own advantages, but they also trade for it, right? You want hydro, you play Bismarck. You want torpedoes, you play Turpits. But we're talking about mechanics. One that can strafe out of the dogfight without losing planes, and the other one that can't. We're talking about one carrier that out damages the next tier carrier, while the other, the other two can't. AP bombs. Enterprise, before the Graf Zeppelin, was the only carrier that has AP bombs currently. And AP bombs, like I always said, good idea, good suggestion, but poorly executed because. It's so stupid to cherry pick your targets. It's not fair. There is a 50k HP, uh, not 50k, half HP Omagi and 100% HP Bismarck. Normally, in any circumstance, you should go for the Amagi because you're trying to get rid of one ship, right? You want one less ship to worry about. No, the better choice is actually to go for the Bismarck with your AP bombs. Why? Because against the Amagi, you probably do like 10% damage if you land on your bombs. But with the Bismarck full HP, for whatever reason, you can delete it. If not, do 90% of the damage to it. Or 80%. If you land them, of course, perfectly well. That's not fair. You know, if you look at battleships, yes, you can angle. You expect it. You know you can angle. You can negate the damage. 0 to 5k damage when you angle your battleships. But when you show broadside at 10 to 15 kilometers, you know you're going to take 20k HP. That's a 20k HP difference, okay? 20k. Doesn't it ring a bell that the difference between having a Amagi that only takes 10k damage and a Bismarck who took 70k damage? A difference of 60k? That is a big difference. That is, see? And only Enterprise. Aside from Graf Zeppelin, but only Enterprise can do that. And then when Enterprise gets into a match where they face all the American battleships where they are resistant to these AP bombs, it's frustrating. I don't understand. I just don't understand why there's so many problems with carriers and people refuse. And this is like, you know, this is the the bottom part of War of Warships community. But people just let it happen because carriers are the minority. They don't like to listen to their words. And if anything happens to the majority, the only thing that that they're concerned with is how carriers affect their game. Instead of just worrying about how it affects your game or my game, can we please come together? Like I said, this is our game. It's not one's game, it's our game. Rather than just pointing figures, why this is not working, why can't we just 
fix it together. And the Graf Zeppelin really presents a perfect example. They tested it, a new mechanic with the Graf Zeppelin. Delay AP bombs because before AP bombs were ridiculous against the German battleships and yet I don't know why Wargaming decided to continue with the AP bombs without figuring out why it's unfair in certain circumstances against um, other ships. You know, it's, it's not right. It's not right because I, I played my Nelson game and I just learned that the Nelson is um, vulnerable against AP bombs. I got deleted. It's not fun. It's really not fun at all. I rather pr prefer that there is a a range of 10 to 20k for all ships. And they had to hit certain parts of the ship instead of, oh, this ship's get countered by AP bomb and this ship doesn't. You know, it's... You can have advantage of having better deck armor scheme, but then you should be taking on the lower end. At the same time, you can't just have it like completely botched. It's stupid. And I don't know what to say. Now, they got they got four months, three to four months left of this year to demonstrate to me of the carrier rework. At this point. I have lost complete trust in Wargaming's um, part on fixing carriers. This year has been a mixed year for me because there's a lot of cool things coming out like premium ships and the Royal Navy Battleships line. It's, it's exciting, it's an exciting year but here we go again. There's, there's problems in this game. Passive games, radar, battleship meta, and you know people just trying to figure out why can't war you fix this stuff why can't they fix this thing well honestly if i had to work with wargaming take a moment wargaming to release whatever you had to release right now so royal navy battleships coming soon release just release everything right now stop all future production because like i said adding new things to the game also present new problems Fix the original problems because what used to be a contained problem with the carrier community has now spread to other classes of ships. Passive games, radar, and battleship meta, right? And like I said, maybe I'm just biased. I don't know what I am because this is what I feel about water warships and I have already lost my prime time with water warships. You know, water warship had a prime time for me but now I'm just... Yeah, I don't feel like I don't want to play anything, so maybe play some Water Warships and then check something out because Water Warships isn't my main content. I mean, it, it can be viewed as, a, viewed as a main content, but I'm not a Water Warships YouTuber all the way, which also presents another problem for several of the community contributors in this controversy because it questions their their future of their content because of Wargaming's decision to handle iChase Gaming. Um, I've been I watched Nazi's video where he's worried that if something were to happen to his Water Warships content because of war gaming, then he has to jump onto another game. And that's you know I did I did this video a month ago that I'm glad that I had people on my channel who accept the fact that I'm willing to leave Water Warships at any time, but not quite yet. But I might. And as the path goes, it looks like Water Warships is going down a darker path rather than the um, brighter path. If you guys got anything to share, um, disagree with me, or agree with me, feel free to. I'm not going to stop your freedom of speech. Aside from that, I will see you guys next time on World of Warships.